Welcome to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Lee Keller. I'm Kim Cavanaugh. Welcome back. Yeah. Happy New Year and all that stuff. Lee? It's almost uh, the middle of January. It is uh, 2009, and uh, we're going to continue on with our yeah. show and talking about things that the average computer user might want to be able to do at home, but maybe you've been a little bit confused about it in the past. So what we attempt to do on this show is to break things down and make them real simple for everybody. I need and, that. And, uh, Lee, I think we've always said the great thing about us is we've made most of the mistakes that you haven't made yet. So don't feel bad. Don't there feel intimidated go. by your computer. Um, it's a, a great tool and a great way to spend time. And um, this week, we're going to actually end next week, we're going to talk about photo editing. One of your favorite programs. It is. And, and photo editing is really cool. I, I, it's... Uh, you know the the di the day of the of the of the film. Remember that mm -hmm. that you put in a oh, camera geez, yeah. and cranked a little wheel and got into the right spot and took your picture and advanced. Well, you it. know my philosophy on paper too. Right, and then once the film was done, you have to put a little canister, run it down to the uh, the drugstore and get it processed. Give them and a, money and a week. Uh, give them money <laughs> and a week from then you've got a picture. Well. Digital changed all that, would you say? Sure did. And Big way. Uh, actually even changed some of the manufacturers out there. Kodak, for instance, has completely changed their, their business model and because of the, um, the move to digital. Even so, the, the big manufacturers are starting to drop their uh, paper-based uh, cameras. It's just don't, nobody uses right. it anymore. So here's, here's the issue. Digital, you shoot, you don't worry about uh, it. Here's the issue, and we'll get the screen up so we can go through today's, um, okay. today's objective. And... And, and it kind of came up over the holidays with my wife, and she has a nice little digital camera, a little point-and-shoot Olympus, um, but she says, I, I, I don't like to use it because I don't know how to get the pictures mm -hmm. out. Uh, and once I get them out, what do I do with them? Yeah, how do so, I find them? Right, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to uh, actually be doing two shows on photo editing using a great free application from our friends at Google, yeah. and uh, we'll take a look at our objectives for this show. The program is called Picasa 3. And uh, it is from the Google Corporation. Yeah. It's free down to download. Um, Catal it catalogs, Lee. That is so neat. It too. does. So what does that mean, though, by to catalog? It, it basically goes out and finds all your photographs and puts them into certain catalogs for you, usually based on when they were taken. Right. So if you took a bunch of pictures on December 25th, 2008, yeah. uh, there's data on the picture itself that you can't see. And it knows about that it. That knows that it's 2005. So we're going to talk about that, yeah. how to sort your fo photo features, and some of the ones that are really great about Picasso, the most common things that people need to do are right there in the program. Yep. And what's the one of the biggies? Take out well, a shot at night or in front of the Christmas tree. Yeah. You're going to get some basic editing You're going to get features? some red eye, oh, right? Yeah. Red eye removal. It's so easy. In this I know, thing too. I know. So, red eye removal, cropping, and then. Cropping, you take that big picture, you didn't need it all. Yep, and we're going to bring all that in and we're going to talk about color correction. So, we've got quite a bit going on this week. And then next week, we'll get into special features and publishing. And of course, this week, we'll also be doing our question of the week. So, let's uh, jump over to the web. So, okay. we said Picasa is a free download from Google. So you can literally just simply go on in your internet browser, type in google.com, mm -hmm. hit the enter key, and that takes you to the Google homepage. But I don't see anything about Picasa here. Well, you right? know, I, I want to point out two ways that you could find this. The obvious thing is you could use Google to search for Picasso. Picasso. You right. can just type in Picasso 3 or Google Picasso. It's going to find it. But you can go directly there just by going to the Google page. And up here where there's more, Okay. Uh, I'd like to th look for more, but... You know what? There's not enough in there. I want even you want more. Even more so, because Google makes a lot of programs and now. mostly free. And they're most of them free. Exactly right. So when you click on even more, it's going to take you over to a page with all of their products. Yeah, and as time goes on, we'll probably talk about we, more of these. Yeah, we probably will. That's for sure. And uh, we we haven't really talked about online applications. And gee, I just saw one that I hadn't seen before. But over on the right or, you know, somewhere on that page, you're going to find Picasa, P-I-C-A-S-A. -A. Okay. We're going to click on that. Okay. And uh, this is how hard this is. <laughs> you're going to click on download. But before I go there, I want to scroll down a little bit. Okay. If you wanted to see what's new, you can play this video, and it'll bring up a YouTube vi video and show you all the new features. Right, and there's a lot of good uh, tutorials and stuff, right, mm -hmm. built into the program. And, uh, by the way, this is it, the... the the web browser has detected that we're using a Windows computer, so it's mm -hmm. offering us a Windows download. Uh, Picasa 3 just was released as a beta for the Macintosh. Oh, yeah. So if you have a That's Macintosh cool. computer, you can use Picasa on there as well. 
Uh, and I'm not sure if that many Mac users are going to use it because in a lot of ways, Picasa is very similar to iPhoto, which comes free well with the Macintosh computer. So One of the advantages of Picasa, though, is you notice down there you got your web album share. So you can share, you've got web space. A lot of those things Absolutely. you can do in, in uh, iPhoto as well. But the cost is a great program. So we'll hit the download button. When we click that, it comes down there and it says, do you want to save the file? Usually we want to save it first, just in case. Right, just in case. So most of the reason we do that is in case there's some sort of hiccup. Uh, you know, if a butterfly flies in front of the internet tower in your yeah. neighborhood or something. <laughs> For me, that's all it takes. <laughs> yeah. Now, you notice the size of the file. It's 9.6 megs. Okay. It's not really that big. Not a big file, right? So, I'm just going to double click on it there. Okay. And, and so in Windows, you're typically, and actually in most computers, you typically get a warning that says you downloaded this from the internet. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you want to use it? And we know it comes from Google, so we know it's a legitimate program. And we're just going to go ahead and go right into the installation process. In this part, you uh, have to be agreeable. Some right. people have trouble being agreeable, but I recommend you agree, and we're going to do install. And it, you know, so how you didn't, fast this and is you going. didn't change anything, Lee. I mean, you didn't have to change any configurations no. or point to anything. All you did is say, "I agree to the terms and conditions." I and read them first. You read them, of course, in your spare time, um, and uh, and then you just use the default location and click mm -hmm. install. It's so very quick. Two clicks of uh, two buttons, and it's going through the process of installing now, and now it's all done. Now. This is a good place to pause, this right? This is. This is a very important spot. Okay. What do you want to do? Well, I, the desktop shortcut I like. Okay, so that's on the screen itself, the main screen. It's going to put a little icon there that you can double click on to open Picasso. Yeah. Okay, that's a shortcut. All right. But on my quick launch, you know, if I'm using this every day, yeah, I want that. Right, now, where is the quick launch, Lee? Quick launch is that little box up at the top where you, you see things like Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Right. And it's also down in the bottom next to the right of your start menu in Windows XP. Mm -hmm. You can find it there. So maybe you don't want that one there. And again, these are just shortcuts, yeah. right? Now, okay, now, if you mm -hmm. don't have Google as your default search engine and you want that, you Leave check that, that box. We have that anyway. And then as soon as we finish, we want to run Picasa 3. For the first time. For the first time. And this is going to be pretty awesome, too. Okay. So we'll click finish. And it's going to go out there and start doing that. And as soon as the program's going to load up. You can see the little hourglass, that means something is happening sometimes. Right. And there's Picasso 3. Okay. So I see it flashing. All right. Now, now we're going to be a little bit short on time on this segment. So maybe we'll come back on the next segment when we talk about how it goes through the process of searching mm -hmm. uh, and cataloging your, uh, your images. But before we do that, just real quickly on this screen, you have two options. You can scan your entire computer for anything that's an image... Yep. Um, what do you call it? Image file. Image mm -hmm. file type. It does or, video files too now. Right, and video files. Or you can just use my documents and my pictures. And I like to go with that option. Yeah, you know why? Because there's a lot of extra junk in your computer. Uh, well, every program that uses a picture in it somewhere, like the logo or everything. Right, right. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a ton of I junk. prefer that one. So we'll, when we come back from the break, we're going to continue on the cataloging process, and then we'll see more about how to use Picasso 3. Okay, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.